Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Rolf Elmer aka Jam Elmar about the Jam and Spoon featuring Plavka classic Right in the Night. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Right in the Night by Jam and Spoon, my interview with Jam Elmar. Enjoy! In 1991, German duo Jam Elmar and Mark Spoon started a project which they called Jam and Spoon. During the years they released tracks such as Stella, Find Me, Angel, Kaleidoscope Skies, Follow Me, Be Angeled and many others. But their biggest commercial success came in the year 1993 when they released the track Right in the Night, which features the beautiful vocals from singer Plavka. For this interview I sat down with Rolf Elmer aka Jam Elmar to ask him about the story behind Right in the Night and more. My first question to him was if he could tell where the inspiration for Right in the Night came from. Right in the Night is based on an idea about uh, a play, uh, a piece that I used to play as a guitarist. Um, I have a classical education, maybe some of you already know. I have a classical uh, music ed education and I, the idea was that I one day would be like a classical guitarist home giving recitals in a tuxedo and and I did I did a few and um, was it was nice though uh, but uh, I, I saw my future somewhere else as you know but uh, anyway um, I played a piece uh, mostly as an encore called Asturias which is actually composed for the piano uh, by an Spanish uh, composer Isaac Albeniz and um, yeah well and uh, I really love that piece it's a wonderful piece of music uh, either on the piano and uh, maybe it's even more beautiful on the guitar because I think also it was um, in the mind of the composer that it was you know originally a piece for the guitar but anyway uh, we don't know uh, but um, the original is in 3-4, in, in a 3-4 beat, and um, I put it into a 4-4 beat, so I had to add some, compose some additional notes to make uh, to make the extra yeah, beat. so it would fit. Yeah, fit, and uh, because in 3-4 it would be something like a waltz or something. It uh, could not uh, be, it could not really work on the floor and on the dance floor. And uh, also, uh, not in a club dance floor, I cannot can probably work on some other floors, you know, where they dance to waltzes, but uh, not in the club. Anyway, um, yeah, so I had to compose a few notes additionally. Also, um, in the original, the, the uh, melody is in the bass, and I put it into the uh, higher registers to make it more audible and uh, make it more work, because otherwise it wouldn't really, it would be too dark, you know, I couldn't really hear the melody. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the uh, main theme of Right in the Night, and uh, Right in the Night originally was a, um, an, an instrumental track. There was no vocal on it, and uh, like I said in the other interview uh, about um, Odyssey Ranjuna, we had this deal with a major record company, and of course they demand a single, a single rec in a single release for the radio, for the people, because they want to sell millions of records. <laughs> That's their goal, um, which is fine. But um, so we had this um, album finished uh, and we were playing it to the a &R guy and the a &R guy said, yeah, it's a wonderful album, but you know, where's, where's the beef? Where's, where's the, the hits? <laughs> and we said, oh, we are, you know, we are dance music producers. We, we don't have it. And he said, yeah, but you know, you are with CBS, Sony Music, you know, you, you have to deliver some kind of radio thing. Oh, okay, all right, yes, so what, what, do, what do we do? And um, so then we finally agreed that we could make something out of this thing with a guitar, you know, this track. And um, 
Marcus was, uh, we were think, uh, thinking about a singer. Of course, so if you want to have something commercial, you need some singer on it. Mostly, it's, uh, that's the key. And um, because people can sing along, instrumental hits are, you know, sometimes there are instrumental hits, but um, it's very uncommon. Mostly they have some kind of voice in it. And so we decided, okay, we have to bring, we have to introduce vocals. So uh, Marcus was looking into his little notebook when P, P was Plavka. And um, because they, they introduced each other um, at one of the first love parades, and he was hanging out there with uh, the hypnotist. And um, yeah, so uh, he called her and said, you know, we have this song and will you come over and uh, sing it for us? Oh yes, sure. So we invited her after Nosy was composing the melody. Nosy Katzmann. In Nosy Katzmann, yes, sorry, thank you. And um, yeah, and so uh, we recorded it and Plavka was coming to Frankfurt. I think she partied the whole night before and she came into the street like this and I was like, oh my God, you know, how is this gonna call, uh, gonna sound? And um, so, uh, but, but she did well and uh, she, with her pretty sweet voice, you know, she was bringing the extra bit of golden dust to the track and uh, yeah, it was nice, you know, this is the story behind Right in the Night. Yeah, oh wow. Yeah. So, so you were all like part of the the recording process. So, like Nosy Katzman was there, Plavka, and you guys. Yeah, yeah. Plavka, uh, Nosy was even there when we recorded Plavka. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, how did the vocal recording session go? Because she said she, she cool. had a, probably a bit of a hangover. Uh, yeah, pro probably she had, but um, you don't hear it on the track. It sounds like amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she, she just delivered it. And Maybe it that's a secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there was no. Uh, uh, it was good, like it is, you know. It yeah. was, was great, like it like it was. Um, and uh, it was so funny because when she arrived, I said, "You know, we're starting recording like two o'clock, maybe in the afternoon." Yeah, that's fine. And I said, "Don't go par too much. Don't go too much partying the night before." I said, "No, no, no. I'm here. F I'm here to work." And I said, "Oh, good girl." But. <laughs> Ah, I think uh, until five, six o'clock she was hanging out at Helium, which was like a nice hanging out club place back at that time. And she, she was seen there at like six o'clock in the morning. I was like, okay, let's go. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> but it could, went really well. Re reminds me a bit of the story about Marcus you told like in the previous interviews, like in 2020, when you said like, you know, you said like, okay, like let's meet at 1 p.m. and then Marcus showed up at 3 p.m. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. 3 p.m. Would, would be like really early, mm -hmm. you know. It was more likely that would, he would show up at 5 or 6 oh, o'clock. Wow. <laughs> ah. So the, the, the instrumental version that we find like on the CD and on the vinyl, that that's, was like the first version of uh, Ride in the Night then? Exactly, yes. So uh, who, who came up with the, the idea for like the flamingo-styled riff in the track? Yeah, that was me uh, because um, naturally I was, uh, uh, um, you know, having all this background from the classical guitar and I was very much into flamenco of course and uh, also jazz guitar I was playing electric guitar also uh, back at that time but yeah all this guitar stuff naturally came yeah. I, I bought this little thing in. yeah like a lot of the jam and spoon stuff has like guitar in it yeah yeah do, do, do you still have that guitar yeah well this guitar is actually um, this is an artificial guitar <laughs> to be honest it's a uh, it's a preset from an Akai S1000, and uh, but the nice thing about this is that it sounds so weird. You know, it sounds like a guitar, but it sounds completely artificial at the same time. I was bringing the flamenco uh, strums in it, and uh, in this combination, you know, this gave this little extra chemistry to it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what was the most difficult part of the production? That was not different. So sometimes you have productions, you know, where everything goes well, and uh, those are probably sometimes the best. Also, I remember when we did Stella and uh, Age of Love, you know, it was just like this, it just happened, you know. And, and also, right in the night, you know, as soon as we had the, um, the, the vocals, we were dumping it into the um, samplers, and, you know, it was just like, um, it was just easy, you know. 
Yeah, so uh, Nosy Cats. Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> no, Nosy Catsman once said that the record company wasn't very convinced about uh, the track and that it, that I thought it was a bit of an average track, uh, while he thought it was one of the best tracks he ever wrote. Uh, did you know that the label wasn't really feeling the track? No, uh, I think the label was was um, well uh, as far as they how they communicating with me, they they were happy about this, and uh, the only person that they didn't like the track very much was my partner Matthias. <laughs> He said, oh, you know, I don't think it's a hit. But uh, finally it became uh, the most um, successful track we ever made. Yeah, like Ride of the Night is the most successful German spoon track ever. Uh, it peaked at the number one position of the charts in Greece, Spain and Finland. It was a top tenet in the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, Belgium, Iceland and the UK. Uh, also in the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Ride of the Night became a big success. Was it a big surprise for you guys that it became such a big hit? Uh, yes, sure. I mean, um, at that time, you know, we were just beginning uh, with our jobs as a producer. You know, this uh, being a producer is not a job anyway. You know, it, we were just growing into this. And um, my first, uh, my first ever golden record and uh, first ever success, like big success, was uh, "Power of American Natives" with Dance to Trance. So uh, this was the first time when I had like like a, a record that was going really peaking, and um, and and a ride in the night was even bigger, and uh, suddenly you realize that you know that you're selling these huge amounts of records every day, and you're going like oh wow this is um, just amazing you know and uh, it's uh, sometimes it's just like a like a warm rain pouring on you just amazing and uh yeah it was um it was something really really special i mean and we received these golden records and um uh, these golden records are probably like, like the gold medals for for the sports men you know sports women and so it's just an award reward about you know having a special thing that you created and uh you know some some uh, uh you know sport sportsmen sports women sometimes they when they hit the number one they also get like a gold medal it's probably something like the same thing you know so do, do you have any idea how many copies have been sold of right and night like in, in total i don't have any idea i think it must be maybe around maybe five million or so all in all oh, <laughs> that, that, that's not bad <laughs> yeah that's okay <laughs> so yeah so yeah you guys also went to top of the pops in uh, the uk to perform the track there oh and, yeah. Uh, yeah usually those performances are like playback but i noticed plovka was actually singing live yes did she insist on doing the track live yeah she was actually doing a lot of shows uh, where she she was singing live we had um set up a, a whole band and she was touring with the band uh with some members of the band we are still good friends you know uh, they're living um just outside frankfurt and um, yeah, it's, it's uh, always nice uh, when I see them. Um, and um, yeah, she, she, she was uh, doing a lot of live shows back then. Yes. Ah, good. So what, was this also your first time on TV? Because yeah, you're, you're also there, right? Yeah, uh, Top of the Bob's um, first time was with... Um, Dance with, to Trance. Uh, Dance to Trance, ah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it was also very successful in England. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this was not the only TV performance you guys did. I, I found a video on YouTube when Ride in the Night was performed at the 1994 national final uh, of the Eurovision Song Contest in Finland. H how did that happen? Actually, the funny thing w it was that, uh, and we were, we were never really in close contact with the guys from Finland. Uh, we have this reward, I think it's somewhere here between the golden records. Um, uh, we never really we got this reward from them, but um, for some reason we never uh, had communication with them. So um, it was maybe a bit of a tragedy because I, of course I would would have liked to travel there and, and you know uh, because um, there were so many competitions and uh, where people could vote uh, what is the best track and we we never won. Uh, was always uh, some other guys, you know, who, uh, who took the win. But th in this time in fin Finland, we scored. So I would have liked to be there around. But then also we were nominated as the best uh, uh, techno record or something for the MTV Music Awards in Berlin. But um, 
Also, we didn't win. Anyway, it's it's, it's not important. <laughs> so, but the, like the, the 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 Eurovision Song Contest, like how, how did that show happen? Like, were they did they invite you or? No, uh, no. They like I said, they didn't invite us. You know, they were doing their own thing. <laughs> As far as I know, because I never um, got in touch with anyone. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what what is your favorite memory when it comes to the release of Ride and Light? Uh, maybe I don't know. There are so many great memories, uh, you know, that were created by the success of this track. Um, of course, a very remarkable was when I received the golden record. Of course, this is always something very, very special. And, uh, but I think um, the most important and maybe the most beautiful thing is when, uh, when you see, when you meet uh, people that you don't know and, uh, and uh, they ask you, well, what is your profession? I say, yeah, I'm a music producer. Oh, what, what did you do? And I said, yeah, I did this German Spoon thing that, oh, German Spoon, I've never heard about German Spoon. And I said, oh, wait, 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 smartphone, brrr, right in the night, and ding, 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 ding. oh, yes, yes, I know, I know. You know, this is the, um, and, uh, oh, I danced to this track like crazy for years and years. And, you know, this, see, this is nice. You could create something that could make uh, some people happy and had a, having a good time. And I think this is maybe the most beautiful side of the job, you know, that uh, you create something that people uh, uh, could have a good time with and um, yeah I think that's that's just wonderful so yeah right in the night has been re-released a few times during the years and it has been remixed by names such as uh, Kid Paul, Microbots, uh, Johan Hiele, Balthazar and Jack Rock and Groove Coverage for example if you could pick whoever you want for a new remix who would you pick and why <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, that's a tough one uh, I don't know it's um, the 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 funny side uh, sorry the funny thing is about this right in the light that mostly we were approached by different producers who said i would like to remix this song because it means so much to me so um i guess this is the best choice you ever can have you know that they some approach people you. are yeah that they approach you and and request to remix this song because they, they put their heart blood in, yeah. into this you can say, okay, we take this bunch of money and, and book someone, you know, to do that. Of course, um, they probably we will uh, receive some really great work. But I think the best is, you know, when, when people come uh, uh, to work on this trend out of their passion. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's, the big, uh, the, that's the best choice then. Okay. So if there's any producers watching this interview and they want to remix it, then they can get in touch with you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, are there actually plans for the 30th anniversary? I know in the previous interview, like you said, like you're not really much into anniversaries, but yeah, anniversaries uh, they always uh, they always show me how old I got. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, we have a nice item on the way that uh, is the perfect celebration for 30 years of Right in the Night. Uh, we are just um, in the final parts of the production for this. And um, yeah, I think uh, every German Spoon fan will want to have one of those. Uh, I don't want to go too much into this because it should be a surprise, but um, it's going to be really, really nice and you're going to love it. I, I know you focus more on techno these days, but do you think you can ever, uh, you'll ever do like a new vocal track with Plavka? Um, yes, sure. Why not? Of course. Yeah. The only problem is that uh, she's not around. She's now living with her family in uh, California. And uh, she, I think she has a great life there. And um, she lives in Beverly Hills or something. Oh, no, that's not, not that. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, yes, sure. Uh, but the thing is, you know, um, recording vocals, today is anyway changed very much. You know, she, I, I would have to send her a playback and she would, you know, like put some vocals on it and you more or less have to accept what you get but um in person works better yes i think so you know um if she would be around like in like in london i would could, could send her a ticket and uh, she would come over and we could like record for for maybe a day or two 
and get the and best results. Out. Yeah, and go out to helium and get crazy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, but I don't see any reason why it should not happen, you know, one day. For, for the 30th anniversary. Yeah, maybe. But, but you know, right in the night is so the recording is should not yeah. never be touched. You know, the vocal recording is like it is. And uh, I think you can't really do it. You can do it different, but not like, better. Like, I don't yeah, know. Like, like an acoustic version, like you on the guitar. Yeah, well, no, not me on the guitar because I, I'm not practicing anymore. And uh, someone else could do that much, much better. And um, so um, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? I don't know. Maybe, maybe below the earth. I don't know. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. No, hopefully not. No. I, uh, well, probably um, in some studio with my equipment doing music. You know, uh, as a musician or as a producer, you never really stop working, and the, it's not working in the common sense. It's not a job that you have. It's just uh, it's, it comes out of your passion for for music and. Uh, so I hope I will still be able to uh, make music, you know, that I don't um, uh, suffer from any stupid diseases or anything. So um, I hope I will have good health and good ears and I'm uh, still producing music. And maybe, I don't know, um, may, may, maybe you can see me in some DJ booth, <laughs> spinning records or playing tracks like on these guys. and. Um, and uh, yeah, th that would be absolutely fantastic. I, there's n actually no reason why, why uh, when you're older, why there should be not be able to to play a great DJ set, for example. You know, look at Mick Jagger. You know, he's still like fantastic on stage. And so, uh, why can't there be like uh, great DJs of the same age and we're still rocking the people? I tell you what, I was uh, in Ghent. Uh, last weekend having a very small club gig and there was a lot of really young people and um, the gig went well you know people had fun they were going like yeah yippee <laughs> and so uh, they had a pretty good time and uh, when I finished you know some people came and everyone was asking hold on how old are you <laughs> so I don't know what that meant but anyway I think they were impressed by that you know that old motherfucker you know that was uh, you know specking their ass a little bit yeah. and uh, because you know I was I could be their father yeah. and uh, but uh, um, uh, not many people have a dad you know so who's rocking crowds yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, let, let's see I'll, I'll, I'll come back in 10 years and then we'll see, then we'll see. you're always welcome yeah, okay thank you so much well thanks for your time and good luck with everything sure thank you all right, that was it. This week's vlog, the story behind Right in the Night by Jam and Spoon featuring Plavka, my interview with Rolf Elmer, aka Jam Elmar. Rolf, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And in case you missed it, there are several other interviews I did with Rolf. They are all available on my channel already, so make sure to check them out. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.